today we're going to have some fun. We're going to look at the match between Liverpool and Manchester United and deconstruct Liverpool's system and try and see if it can work on Football Manager. My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. So smooth, just so smooth. The lack of effort is absolutely shocking. Whether you're a Liverpool fan, United fan, or a neutral, this was a strange game of sorts because you would never think that a United team could put out such a shambolic performance. I mean, their midfield wasn't non-existent. I mean, they didn't start with any of their recognised midfielders. Well, maybe Paul Pogba, but he lasted as long as my coffee. So by the time my coffee was done, so was he. Um, they brought on a young Hannibal who showed a lot of spirit and fire in the middle of the park. He looked like he wanted to take somebody out of the game immediately and that sparked a few of the other United players in doing, into doing the same. But the fact remains, United's tactical system was just poor. Um, they had no midfielders who could control the match in the centre of the park, which allowed Thiago Alencantara to dictate play from very deep positions. He was swinging these passes all across the pitch. You know, his pass, his numbers were just insane on the day. Yeah, I doubt if future matches are going to be like this, or at least I hope they won't be. Um, but what we're going to do today is we're going to take a look at some of the things that happened during the game. And then what I'm going to try and do is try and analyze some of this and see how we can apply it to Football Manager to create a tactical system that represents what Liverpool was doing on the night. Everybody's going to have a different point of view. This is mine. Naturally, I respect everybody's point of view. And please let me know in the comments below what your interpretations of the game are vis-a-vis -vis Football Manager. Okay, the first thing we want to establish are the roles of some of these players that were playing on the day. Liverpool have flirted with a 4-3-3 and a 4-2-3-1 this entire season. But on the day itself, Liverpool were playing a 4-3-3. And what was very clear was the role that Sadio Mane was playing. He was the furthest forward, but he wasn't playing like an advanced forward in the game. He was dropping deep a lot of times and he was looking to release players from wider positions. That role was probably that of a false forward. In the game of Football Manager, if I were to assign him a role, that was playing the same way, it would definitely be the false nine. I'm not going to cover every single role right now. I'm just going to focus on the important ones using the images from the game itself. Now here we can see Sadio Mane clearly dropping deep for the first goal. And we have Mo Salah and Alexander Arnold busting a gut to go down the flanks. This drew Harry Maguire out of position. In fact, you know, the fact of the matter remains Liverpool was playing against a United side that didn't have a midfield screen. So Harry Maguire was under a lot of pressure, made a couple of mistakes, committed himself, that created the space on the right, on the left, uh, that released the two wide players from Liverpool. And this resulted in the first goal, as you can see, Luis Diaz drifting into the centre um, as a goal-scoring threat. Then we've got Thiago Alancantara. Looking at his heat map, he does prefer the left side of the pitch. Um, he's also got some presence in the centre. The thing about Liverpool here that we have to remember is that he also drops deep whenever Liverpool want to play the ball out from defence. He's one of two players, the other being Fabinho, who will cover for Joel Matip when he bombs forward. While I'm going to focus on those two mainly for the simulation, we also have got to remember that Liverpool's attack wasn't very wide. It was in fact quite narrow. If you look at the positions that Andy Robertson takes up, he actually takes up quite central positions whenever they're building play up. Finally, we have to talk about the passing triangles. Liverpool's first goal was a 25-pass move. The only player who didn't touch the ball in that move was actually Virgil van Dijk. Whenever Liverpool build play up, there's a lot of short passing triangles down one flank. Right? On the right flank, you'll see a lot of support play. The midfielders, central midfielders will drift to that side to support play as they bring the ball up. So there's plenty of short passing triangles. Um, they create overloads on one side of the pitch. This creates a lot of problems for defensive sides because if they start coming up to engage the play, uh, the Liverpool players, they can easily be caught out of position, which is exactly what happened to United. So those are the main elements that I want to put into this uh, tactical recreations. How are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is use a tool that I've created with the help of the community called the Total Tactics Tester. You can find links to their Discord in the description below and you can just go there and you can 
use it to help you create your own tactics too. We're going to create the tactic. We're going to give it to the, the team in this testing league and see how it does. Then we're going to take it and give it to Liverpool and see how Liverpool do in one season. The thing is here is this. Almost any tactic works with Liverpool, which is why I want to run it with the tactics tester to try and see whether the roles and duties make sense. Looking at the whole tactic, we've got uh, a team that's playing very aggressively. Uh, we've got an inverted wing back. We've got wing backs on attack. In fact, we've got quite a few attack duties in the setup. We've got inside force on attack. We've got an F9 for where Sadio Mane will be playing. Um, Thiago will play in the roaming playmaker position. Jordan Henderson was, will be playing as a box to box midfielder. Fabinho is the DM on support. Andy Robertson is the wing back on attack. And Trent Alexander as the inverted wing back on support. Now, let's look at the team instructions. The team instructions are pretty straightforward. We are funneling play. We are forcing the opposition inside. The opposition instructions, which I will go into a bit later, they are meant to complement this as well. We've got prevent short good copy distribution. We're playing again, pressing pretty high up the pitch. Now, as far as the distribution to the, from the goalkeeper, it's a counter press. As far as the in transition instructions are concerned, it's all again pressing counter press with a counter. The goalkeeper has been told to distribute to the back line. Then, as far as the in trans in as far as the in possession shots are concerned, we've got a very high tempo shorter passing, fairly narrow to replicate what they were doing in the United game, running a defense. Now, play the focus play instructions are meant to. Encourage those triangular passes down the flanks. The side midfielders will go there and support play. And then we've got an overlap and an underlap instruction. The reason why I've used this, an overlap instruction might see Trent Alexander Arnold occasionally bomb down the flanks, which is what we want. Now, on the left hand side of the pitch, we've got an underlap instruction. The reason being, an underlap encourages the widest player to hold on to the ball and feed it to players that are making inside runs from behind and ahead of them. And this is what the inside forward is going to relish when he gets into the final third. If F9 is going to drop in and he's going to try and release both these inside forwards. As far as the PIs are concerned, the F9 has been told to close down more, tackle harder. The inside forward on the left has got Rome from position, close down more and tackle harder. The inside forward, Mo Salah's position, close down more and tackle harder as well. The box to box midfielder has been told to dribble less, shoot less often, move into channels and tackle harder. The roaming playmaker has been told to move into channels and tackle harder. The M on support is marking tight, the inverted wing back is marking tight, the ball playing defenders are doing the same thing, and the wing back on attack is doing the same thing. He's marking tight too. The issue is going to be away matches because I'm fully expecting this team to concede a few goals away from home. The ball playing defenders for weaker teams, I don't recommend using Mark Taita unless you have a very good defense. Liverpool have a very good defense. This shouldn't be an issue for them. I do expect them to lose a few away matches if I holiday mode with this tactic. Position instructions are concerned. They are meant to complement the defensive with instructions which are trying to funnel play inside. So we've got, for example, the fullback on the right. We are showing him onto his left foot. Same goes with the fullback. On the left flank, we're showing him onto his right foot. This applies to the wing backs as well. Wingers, on the other hand, we want to keep them on the flank, so they are forced to just drop in crosses. Winger on the right is shown to his right foot. The winger on the left is shown to his left foot. All strikers will be shown to their weaker foot. Whenever we funnel play, we expect central midfielders to pick up the ball. So, we've told our players to tackle them harder. This way, whenever play is forced into the middle, the player closest to that opposition player carrying the ball will try and tackle him harder if he enters his zone. So let's go find out what the results look like with Napoli after they've simulated it for one season in the four testing leagues. So let me quickly explain the four testing leagues. We've got a balanced teams league which is meant to reflect an average league around the world where you have two teams that might win it couple of teams that might go down and a bunch of average size here if you finish them on the top two is a decent tactic they finish second then we've got the average teams league where teams are of a similar stature here you should try and win this league and Napoli have done just that in the underdog teams league well once again you should try and win this league otherwise if you can't win this league then give up on your tactic and go make another one the last league is actually the elite teams league where Napoli are the underdogs um Trying to avoid finishing in the bottom three should be the way to go. If I look at some of the league tables, I discover a pattern away from home. This tactic might have an issue. So 
ideally, if I were playing the game, I would tweak it slightly for away matches. Perhaps I might turn this into a wing back on support instead of a wing back on attack. And I might even drop the tempo and drop my defensive line slightly and remove tight marking on the two central defenders. But that's not what I'm going to do. We're going to actually go to Liverpool, give them the tactics, simulate them for one season. We're not going to make any tweaks to the tactic. We just want to find out how they will do with a very aggressive tactic. If you're looking at the performance of Liverpool, they didn't do too badly. They won the league as champions. And they also have Mo Salah and Luis Diaz finishing with more than 20 goals this season. In fact, Mo Salah had 41 goals in total for the entire season. If I'm looking at the numbers, they aren't that bad. Expected goals per game 2.24, expected goals against 0.86. In terms of performances as a midfielder, Thiago did quite well. Assist per 90 at 0.36 and pass completion of about 86.25%. That's pretty decent for a playmaker. Diving deeper into the results, I found out that Liverpool only lost away from home. They never lost a single match at home. Every single defeat was away. So the number of defeats that they had could have been avoided if we had removed uh, Mark Titan and the two ball-playing defenders and also played with a slightly lower defensive line. One thing I was after in this system was triangular passing. So there have to be plenty of options when the wingbacks have the ball. Here, Andy Robertson has the ball. Virgil van Dijk comes up to support him. And then because of the overload that we achieve on one side of the pitch, it actually creates a 1v1 chance on the opposite side of the pitch. And if Virgil van Dijk can find a deep diagonal, it can pull the defense apart, allowing any of these cent any of these strikers to get into goal-scoring positions. Here, he plays the ball forward. The defenders have already been pulled out of position. So Sadio Mane will attack the pocket here. And as he attacks the pocket, um, he gets a pullback and he scores the first goal. He scores the goal. So once again, another move, a very simple move. The F9 drifts wide, creating space for the rest of the players. And it's fairly simple to pull teams apart using the F9. Nothing is ever perfect. When Manchester United came calling at Anfield, Liverpool only beat them by one solitary goal, even though they had a very high XG of 2.82, which is probably down to the fact that they had quite a few chances. Here Andy Robertson plays a throw to Louis Diaz. Virgil van Dijk finds Alexander Arnold and Curtis Jones releases Louis Diaz, who goes on to score. I don't think this is the best replication of the Liverpool tactic. I think you guys can come up with something better. In fact, links to my tactic are below in the description of the video. You can use the tactic, go out there and make your own little variations. Don't forget, the tactic below doesn't have any set pieces. I didn't include any set pieces. In fact, they're all default. So I'm sure that with the insertion of some set pieces, the tactic will become even stronger. Once again, if you want to test out your tactics, there is a total tactics tester. The invitation to the Discord is in the description of the video as well. So go try your tactics. I'm very eager to know how your replication comes along and whether or not this video inspires you to do your own. Now, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Meanwhile, you guys, please stay safe. Take care of each other. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.